Praise the Lord, everyone. Good morning to you. Thank you for joining with us this morning again for morning prayer and devotion on this Monday. And we are looking forward to another great week as we study God's Word together and take all these needs before His throne. I'm glad to report this morning that Anthony Sifford is continuing to do well with his recovery at home. Also, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Also, Carmen reported during our prayer time Friday morning that her cousin Amanda received a good report from the doctor with a recent scan not being able to find previously identified cancer in her hips. So we're giving the Lord praise for these two reports this morning, and we're believing God's going to move in these needs that we're about to take to him the same as he has moved for others. Uh, Sister Marcia. Uh, reported Friday that she's been taking a new medication for diabetes and it has been making her nauseous and so we need to pray for this to resolve and also Marcia has an ultrasound scheduled this week and is asking that we pray for good results from that. We need to remember the others on our list who have diabetes. These include Cheryl Lachance, Jimmy Warren, Brother Pulliam, Cindy and Lloyd Page, Tim Workman, Kristen's cousin Grady, Myself, Steve Cummins, Anthony Williams, Michael Williams, Emily Stanley, Evie, Rose Brown, Becca, and her mother Christina, J.R. Johnson, Kristen's neighbor Natalie, Christian Carr, and Titus Dornbach. Darla Crane has been doing precautionary chemo treatments every three weeks. Let's keep praying for her as well as the others on our list who are battling cancer currently. Of those recovering from recent surgery, include Twyla Renfro, Michelle's trained sister Cindy, Carmen's cousin Shannon, Morgan Reed, Robin, Jimmy Fortune, Michael Langdon, Tammy Lawson, Johnny's cousin Kathy, Judy Williams' sister Mary, and Donna Hayes. Uh, we're believing also for continued recovery for those who are in more long-term uh, situations of recovery, including Pastor Chris Dew with guillain barre Syndrome, uh, Doc Dunn, who broke his neck recently, Judy Williams' sister Paula, uh, who broke her foot, Brother Robert Bentley uh, with a broken fibula, uh, Jewel recovering from a bad fall, breaking four ribs in the ball of her shoulder, Dalton, who broke his back in a car accident a couple of months back, Kathy Hardy is recovering from a broken hip, Seth is needing to regain feeling in one of his fingers, he had surgery a few months back in that one finger is still lacking uh, full um, filling. Pastor David Kent uh, has partial paralysis and has been recovering in a rehab unit. Jim Tweedy also in rehab, regaining his strength after a recent heart problem. Anthony Sifford, <coughs> excuse me, Wayne Owens, Evangelist Billy Huey, Carmen's cousin Kelly, Tina's mother, Johnny's nephew Joey, and Sheila Sappington are all recovering from stroke. And we need to remember uh, Gary Shepard, who just had a lung biopsy on Friday, I believe. Uh, those with stomach issues uh, need our continued prayers, as well as those in back pain with arthritis, with mobility issues. We're praying for those with lung and respiratory problems, including Rebecca Rush, Gary Shepard, Kendra Ortiz, Robbie Northrup, and Helen. Uh, also, uh, Judy's mom has been having some respiratory issues as well, although she has been doing better as of the last report. Uh, those with heart issues need our continued prayers, especially Mike DeRoos, who's having open heart surgery uh, just any day now, I believe. If he has not already had that, uh, it was supposed to be happening in the month of March. So let's continue to pray for him as well as these others. Also, those with migraine headaches, those who suffer with Parkinson's disease, these include Beulah Ziegler, Kristen's friend Matt, Joey Etheridge, Vivian, Tim Workman, Russ, and my dad, Ron Bryant. Also praying for Beulah's uh, neck issues and for her to be able to um, have a better placement situation um, for better uh, care. We're praying for those with dementia and MS. Uh, many children are 
on our list needing continued prayers today. Let's keep praying for them. I will call their names out in our prayer time this morning. And we have many other health needs with Sister Mara Sullivan with lupus and autoimmune disease, Sue's brother with chronic problems from a past head injury, Regina and Bob battling with shingles, uh, Pam Pulliam's granddaughter Haley uh, has a baby due this time next month and has medical issues. Buddy Randolph had a recent stroke. Bonnie Petty has weight loss of unknown cause. Uh, Sherry, who is a co-worker of Judy's daughter Jennifer, needs a liver transplant. And we're also praying for health needs for Robin, Terry Mizell, Gary Nelson, Judy's brother, Shirley Garner, Devin Huff, George Tibbs, and Mike and Tony Hodge. Let's keep praying for our nursing home residents and those in other long-term care facilities, uh, for Sharon Downing, who's on hospice care, and in other needs this morning, we're praying for job situation uh, going on with Cheney Nelson and Pastor Chuck Clark. Uh, Cheney's been under a lot of stress from his job, and Pastor Chuck Clark recently lost his job and needs to find another one. So let's pray for God's perfect will in that situation. Uh, let's pray for our military personnel today. Judy and Mike's grandson, Andrew, serves in Romania. Is stationed there currently. Johnny's nephew, Mark, is stationed in Japan and has been taken off the ship recently due to illness. And we're praying this will work out so that he can uh, continue his military career. And let's just pray for all of our soldiers uh, who are in harm's way today protecting our freedoms, uh, for God's protection upon them, and pray for success of every uh, mission. Those uh, with spiritual and family needs today, Jenny Perkins' sister Lisa has mental, emotional, and spiritual need of healing. Jennifer and Brenda's family needs uh, continued work of salvation among many family members. J.R. Johnson, Annette and Dave, the Clark family, Judy's daughter Jennifer and her family, Pam Pulliam's family, Baby G's adoption proceedings, Rebecca's mother, uh, David Biddick's daughters and their families, the Sappingtons, Matt and Michaela, Mark and Caitlin, Regina's family, Judy Johnson's grandson Holden, Beulah's granddaughter Amber, Jean, Cheryl Lachance's family and friends, Marsh and Britt's family, especially their oldest son Josh. We're believing with pastors Bobby and Doris Harris for spiritual breakthrough in their community, Fairfield, Iowa. We're praying for several who are battling with addictions, including Alan, Ashley, Dawson, Charles, and Frank, also William. We're praying for Pam Davies, who needs strength to take care of her husband. And we're also praying for our Mingo RCF residents. Uh, we had, I believe, five in service with us yesterday, and one was a first-time guest, so that was exciting for us. Our Job Corps students need continued prayers. Grace's best friend's family needs wholeness and peace in relationships. Now we're praying for uh, Grace and her uh, husband and for God's guidance and direction in their life situations going forward. Global and North American missionaries, we need to be praying for uh, Tim and Rachel Richmond, Metro missionaries to Detroit, Michigan, uh, Pastors William and Don Kramer in Houston, Missouri. We're praying for the Heishen family, missionaries to the military families in Germany. And they need God's strength and wisdom as they minister to the soldiers stationed there. The Tomyevs and Pattersons in Ukraine need constant uplifting and prayers for protection as they are ministering there in the midst of uh, that war. We need to pray for peace and comfort uh, today for so many who have recently lost uh, loved ones. Uh, we're praying for Gary, for Marcia's family, for Robert Holding for Marcia's friend Paula, Amanda Carter, Pastor Jeremy Perry, Kathy Hardy, and the Milam family. All of these have suffered great loss uh, recently, and we're believing for God's comfort and strength for each of them today. Good morning to each of you today. Thank you for joining with us. Excuse me. <clears throat> this is just the morning crud here. I apologize. Nothing major going on. It's just kind of the way the morning start out around here. 
Uh, good morning to you, Carmen, Judy, and Kristen, Johnny. Um, good to see uh, each of you today. Sherman is with us as well. Jamie is with us. Sister Marcia, if I didn't mention her, and I'm just kind of uh, paging through the, the names that I can see right now. But we thank God for uh, each of you today. Um, Carmen is reporting in uh, this morning a, a new prayer request. Helen, we've been praying for following a bad a car accident. Uh, she passed away this weekend, so we need to pray for that family uh, dealing with this loss as well as the others that we've been praying for. So let's make sure we lift up these needs to the Lord today. I want to talk to you about um, ascertaining the will of God for our lives. And this is something we circle back to often because it is such an important subject. And uh, the will of God is something that uh, unfortunately is um, often misunderstood. And, um, and people do not have the assurance about it that they need. So let's talk about this for a day or two here. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 9 says God is faithful. We could just stop right there and talk about that for a while. That's a major declaration of the word of God that we need to always remember in every situation. God is faithful. And then he goes on to say, by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. God is faithful and it is he who has called us into relationship. So God initiated this. We didn't initiate it. His spirit drew us and he has a will for our life and we can know his will. The Living Bible says God invited you into this wonderful friendship. God is not playing games with us. He wants us to understand his will, his purpose, and his plan for our lives. And we may say, I want God to guide me, but yet I am often confused. I don't know what to do. And often the problem is that we're simply looking for the wrong thing and we are being unrealistic. We need to know what we're looking for sometimes before we can find it. And so uh, exactly what is God's will? What is it that we are looking for? Well, sometimes you find out what something is by first identifying what it is not. And the first thing I want to talk to you about, and we'll just talk about this point today, is that God's will is not a fill-in. And, um, you know, as Pentecostals, this is the background that I'm coming from, um, we really emphasize feelings, and there is a lot to feelings. We're thankful we can feel the presence of God. We're thankful that we can feel promptings of the Spirit. And I'm not belittling, belittling that in any way. There's definitely impressions. God speaks to us um, through our feelings. But we also need to recognize that um, when we're always leaning on feelings or some supernatural sign, wanting God to pull our heartstring a certain way so that we'll know exactly what to do. We have to understand that because we are emotional beings, there's a lot of other sources of our feelings than God. And so our feelings can be very unreliable. Our feelings will often guide us the wrong way. Feelings can be caused by fatigue, hormones, or an event that you've just experienced. And Jeremiah said in chapter 17, verse 9, I believe of his writing, uh, he said that the heart is deceitful. Uh, this is spoken of again in the New Testament, um, that our heart is desperately wicked and that we have to ask God to search our heart. We can't depend upon our own feelings. So our heart can play tricks on us. The devil can even create a feeling through his influence. And if I had listened to my feelings in many situations, you know, I've had some people tell me sometimes, like if I ask someone to preach or something, uh, they might say, well, I just don't feel it. And uh, well, you know, there's a lot of times I don't feel it. Hopefully I'll feel it by the time I get uh, up there and begin to do it. But if I, if I went strictly by my feelings, I wouldn't have pastored through the first year because my feelings are sometimes 
uh, even attacking the will of God in my life. So let's understand that as we're trying to figure out God's plan for our lives, we do not go just by feelings alone. Um, Paul said, I believe in Romans 8, 28, for we know that all things work together for good. Sometimes it doesn't feel like that things in my life are working for my good. But Paul said, throw that out. You don't go by your feelings. You go by what you know. We know that all things work together for good. We know from this scripture we just read this morning that God is faithful. And so we need to remember that when we're seeking the will of God, we need to remember to only depend on the things that we can know from the word of God. And sure, God will prompt us and will confirm his word at times, but we also need to be rock solid in the word and understanding that if we just go by our feelings, we're going to be tossed about with every wind that comes along because our feelings are so unreliable. Many days I don't feel like doing this broadcast, but by the time I get done, I'm glad that we join together again in prayer and I'm strengthened for my day. So I pray that it helps you this morning. We're going to talk much this week about uh, the will of God and uh, we're going to talk tomorrow about the fact that God's will is not a simple formula. And uh, I think that's going to bless you as well. And I'm taking these devotions this week from some writings of uh, Pastor Rick Warren. And uh, there are some areas that he has some great uh, wisdom to share. And so we're going to glean from that throughout the week. God bless you in Jesus' name. Let's go to prayer right now. Let's believe God to move in these needs. And I feel like we should just, first of all, uh, take these needs before the Lord of those who are um, needing comfort and peace today. And um, uh, adding to that list, Helen's family, along with these others. Also, let's pray for uh, Jesse Crutchfield. Yesterday at the end of our service, uh, we were told that uh, he was uh, taken to the emergency room and that they did not know if he was going to live or not. And I haven't heard an update on that. But let's pray for him and for his family today as well. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to you depending upon you for our everything today. Lord, you are our strength and our song. Even if it has to be a song in the night, Lord, you provide the song whenever that we need it. And we know today you're going to lift us up and you're going to strengthen those who are weary. You're going to comfort those today who are afflicted, those who are brokenhearted. And for that, we give you praise right now, knowing that you are faithful. And we're going to depend not upon our feelings, Lord, but upon what we know. And we're going to establish your will for this day through the promises of your word. We pray for your peace and comfort for Helen's family, for the Crutchfields and what they're going through right now. We believe, God, you can work a miracle in that situation and we believe, God, for these others who have lost someone recently. We lift up Robert holding today. God, comfort his heart. Strengthen him today. Marcia's family and Marcia's friend who have both lost someone dear to them. Amanda and Pastor Jeremy Perry and Kathy Hardy, the Milam family. God, strengthen them. Heal Pastor Milam's body, Lord, and also heal his heart from this uh, situation that has just devastated him and his children, and his church family. Give him strength, Lord, to continue on today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We believe for healing for each of these, God, who are battling with illnesses today. We pray for Marcia that she would be able to overcome this nausea, that, that she would adjust to this medication, or that they would find another way to offer treatment for her. We pray, God, for her ultrasound that she has to have this week, that she would have good results. We believe, God, for all the others that we've mentioned who are battling diabetes currently. We're believing for healing today for each and every one. We give you the praise, Lord. Hallelujah. Be with Darla, Lord, who's going through precautionary chemo treatments. We pray, God, for my Aunt Virginia, who's getting ready to start radiation now after having completed her chemo. We thank you for bringing her through this, and we know you're going to bring her through the next phase of treatments. We lift up all these others who are battling cancer today. Alicia, 
Michelle's sister Cindy, Tony, Marcia's friends, grandparents, and Amy Dees. We pray for Bob Stanley and for Melissa Petzo, for Michelle Clark and for Cheryl, for Diane Escher, for Venus's niece Heather, for Dennis Phelps and for Sherry. We pray for Scott and for Betty and for Ari, for Donna Hayes, for Jamie Joe's grandfather, for Johnny's cousin Kathy, for Kristen's Aunt Jean and for Christy Smith, for Carmen's cousin Amanda, for Dwayne and for Claire and for Alice, for Sawyer. Hallelujah. We pray, God, for those who are recovering from recent surgery. We pray you'd reach down today and, and minister to them, Lord, quick and full recovery for Twyla and Cindy for Shannon and Morgan and Robin, for Jimmy, for Michael Langdon and Tammy Lawson, for Kathy, for Judy's sister Mary, and for Donna Hayes. We believe for continued recovery for each and every one that we've mentioned today who have suffered stroke, who are battling different diseases and, and are recovering from broken bones today and from paralysis. We know, God, that you're touching them right now as we pray. Hallelujah. You are well able. There's nothing that's too hard for you this morning, God. We give you the thanks. Thank you for every strike that you took for our healing. In Jesus' name, we believe for healing for these who are battling with stomach issues and with back pain, with arthritis, with mobility problems. We pray, God, for those with lung issues today. Reach down, God, and minister healing to each one of them. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God, for those with heart problems today. We pray you would be with Mike as he's having this uh, open heart procedure. We pray for Brother Mark Morris, for Kelly B., for Blaine and for Kenny, Mike Sappington and Sean Joyce and Sister Patty Arnold. We lift up Don and Betty again today, Bud Taylor and Jimmy Warren. We pray for Amy D.'s uh, congestive heart failure issues and for Cheryl a chance, God, we pray, God, you would be with her today and strengthen her body in Jesus' name. We believe for healing of migraine headaches for those that are affected, healing of Parkinson's for each and every one today that has been mentioned. We believe for healing of dementia for Vivian, for Johnny's mom, for Kristen's friend's dad. We believe for healing of MS for Tracy and Sarah, for Riley and for Pastor Delot, we believe for healing for each of these children today. We lift up Bailey, May, and Abram. We pray for Abel and Arlo and Tano, for Sophia, for Brantley and Elsie, for Navy and Milo. We thank you for their great progress. We continue to lift them up today, believing for baby Dallas and baby G's needs as well, for Abby and for Gus's grandson, for Madison, for Kyra, for Darla's granddaughter. For Tammy's granddaughter, Emily, we believe for Lorelei, Jenna, and Tucker in their uh, battle with childhood cancer that they're going to overcome in the name of Jesus. Lord, each and every one of these other health needs that we've called out this morning, we know, God, that you're working in these situations. You're healing shingles. You're healing right now autoimmune disease and lupus. You're healing, God, those uh, who are... Uh, battling with liver problems, with kidney issues today, and other conditions. We pray for those who are in the nursing homes today, God, that you would strengthen and encourage them. We pray for Sharon Downing on hospice care. You're able, God, to work a miracle for her and for her family today. We give to you, Lord, every job situation, every concern, every uncertainty today. You see Pastor Chuck Clark, who needs a new job. God, we pray that you would continue to provide for him and for his wife, Donna. Give them reassurance today of your will in this situation. We pray for Cheney's job situation. We pray, Lord, for Mark Mitchell, the uncertainty with his military career due to recent illness. God, touch him today. Restore him to health and let your will be done in his situation. We pray, God your protection upon Andrew Williams today, stationed in Romania, others who are in that area where uh, war is going on in Ukraine. We pray, God, your protection upon our missionaries there and upon the citizenry in that nation and in Russia, those who are innocent bystanders not involved in this. God, we pray your help for them, for our churches in those areas. 
Lord, in all the Baltic states and all the countries bordering this region, God, we pray for stability and for peace in our world today. We pray, God, for those who have spiritual needs today, family needs. You've heard these names that we've called out this morning, and you care about each one of these situations. Those who we've mentioned who are battling with addictions today, we know, God, that you are able to break every chain. There's power in your name this morning, Lord. And we give you the glory for their deliverance. We believe, God, for these to be strengthened today and to learn to walk in the victory that you have already won for them. In Jesus' name, God, bring back the prodigals. We pray, God, you would move in these young people's lives. Move, Lord, in the lives of those who have fallen away from our local assembly. Lord, draw them back to you, God. Do a work in their hearts today and restore them. In the name of Jesus, we pray for those at Mingo RCF, Lord, continue to work in their lives, continue to work in our Job Corps students' lives. In Jesus' name, we pray for Grace and for her husband and for her best friend's family. God, move in their lives, in their relationships. Direct them today, God. We give you praise for all these things that you're doing. We lift up our global and North American missionaries today. The Haitian family needs your protection and your strength and your direction today as they minister to military personnel in Germany. Brother and Sister Kramer in Houston, Missouri, God, they're fighting a spiritual warfare there, and we pray you would strengthen them. Brother and Sister Richmond, Lord, give them wisdom and direction as they endeavor to plant new works in Detroit metro area. We pray, God, for success in their deputation. In the name of Jesus, Lord, protect the Tomyevs and Pattersons in Ukraine today. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, give favor, Lord, to all of our missionaries, all of our pastors, Lord, who are laboring, Lord, establishing new works and, and continuing with works of, that have been in operation for many years. We pray for great success for every local church that's preaching truth and if a church is not preaching truth, we pray, God, that they would receive revelation, Lord, to be able to guide people in the right direction. In the name of Jesus, we give you thanks, Lord, for hearing our petitions today. We know that you care about our needs. Lord, every need that's being submitted during this prayer gathering today, I pray, Lord, as we bind together for those needs, that we would see those answers of and be able to lift up praise, Lord, to your name, knowing that you did the work and that you are the one that should receive all the glory and the praise. And we give you the honor today. We give you the thanks for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you for praying with us again today. I'm going to go back here for a moment and play catch up on any comments that have been uh, coming in while we've been going through our needs and praying together. And uh, be sure that I'll be praying for whatever needs that you submitted this morning. If we have not already seen those, we will be praying for those. Thank you, prayer team. Let's join again uh, together tomorrow morning right here on Facebook Live at 730. And let's keep lifting up these needs to the Lord. I'll see you then.